Due to the enthusiasm with which psychologists have embraced the Big Five, a number of tests other than the UPIR have been developed to measure it. The first one is the Big Five Inventory or BFI. This test is made publicly available for non-commercial purposes to researchers and students. It consists of 44 items, which makes it relatively quick to administer. Another one is the 10-item personality inventory that contains only two items for each of the Big Five dimensions. A nonverbal measure of the Big Five has also been developed. It is the five-factor nonverbal personality questionnaire. It is administered by showing respondents illustrations of behaviors indicative of the Big Five dimensions. Respondents are then asked to gauge the likelihood of personally engaging in those behaviors. A criterion is defined as a standard on which a judgment or decision can be made. In a scale development, a criterion group is a reference group of test takers who share specific characteristics and whose responses to test items serve as a standard according to which items will be included in or discarded from the final version of a scale. The process of using criterion groups to develop test items is referred to as empirical criterion key. Because the scoring or keying of items has been demonstrated empirically to differentiate among groups of test takers. One of the tests devised through the use of criterion group research is the MMPI. It is originally called the Medical and Psychiatric Inventory. In 1943, the University of Minnesota published this test under a new name, the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory. The MMPI was a product of a collaboration between psychologist Stark Hathaway and psychiatrist John McKinley. This test contained 566 true-false items and was designed as an aid to psychiatric diagnosis with adolescents and adults 14 years of age and older. Research preceding the selection of test items included a review of textbooks, psychiatric reports, and previously published personality test items. This table presents the list of the 10 clinical scales of the MMPI along with a description of the corresponding criterion groups in each scale. In the development of MMPI, members of the criterion groups were drawn from a population of people presumed to be members of a group with a shared diagnostic label. And by contrast, members of the control group were normal or non-diagnosed people who ostensibly received no such experimental treatment. Aside from clinical scales and validity scales, there are also MMPI content scales. As its name implies, content scales composed of groups of test items of similar content. Content scales bring order and face validity to groups of items derived from empirical criterion keying that ostensibly have no relation to one another. Another one is the supplementary scales. It is a catch-all phrase for the hundreds of different MMPI scales that have been developed since the test publication. These scales have been devised by different researchers using a variety of methods in statistical procedures, most notably factor analysis. Historically administered by paper and pencil, the MMPI now is administered by many methods, including online, offline on disk, or by index cards. There is also an audio version for simulatory test takers available, with instructions recorded on audio cassette. 
Test takers respond to the items by answering true or false. The items left unanswered are constructed as cannot say. There is no time limit for the test and the time required to administer the 566 items is typically between 60 to 90 minutes. Most of the features of the MMPI in terms of its general structure, administration, scoring, and interpretation is applicable also to the MMPI too. The most significant difference between the two tests is the more representative in standardization sample or normal control group used in the norming of the MMPI too. Some items were rewritten, some are eliminated, and the others were added. The MMPI contains the total of 567 true-false items, including 394 items that are identical to the original MMPI items, 66 items that were modified or rewritten, and 107 new items. The suggested age range of test takers for the MMPI 2 is 18 years and older as compared to 14 years and older for the MMPI. Just like the MMPI-1, MMPI-2 can be administered online, offline by paper and pencil, or by audio cassette, and it takes about the same length of time to administer. The 10 clinical scales of the MMPI are identical to those on the MMPI-2. The three original validity scales of the MMPI were also retained in the MMPI-2 and three new validity scales were added. The back page and frequency, true response and consistency, and variable response and consistency. The back page and frequency scale contains items seldom endorsed by test takers who are candid, deliberate, and diligent in their approach to the test. A random or inconsistent pattern of responses may become evident that's why the FB scale is designed to detect such pattern. The TRIN scale is designed to identify acquiescent and non-acquiescent response patterns. It contains 23 pairs of items worded in opposite forms. Consistency in responding dictates that, for example, a true response to the first item in the pair is followed by a false response to the second item in the pair. The third one, the Vrin scale, is designed to identify indiscriminate response patterns. It is also made up of item pairs, where each item in the pair is worded in either opposite or similar form. The senior author of the MMPI-2, James Butcher, also developed another validity scale after the publication of the test. It is called the S scale. It is a validity scale designed to detect solve presentation in a superlative manner. Another proposed validity scale designed to detect malingerers and in personal injury claims was proposed by Paul Lee Helly and his colleagues. It is called the FBS or Faking Bad Scale. This scale was originally developed as a means to detect malingerers who submitted bogus personal injury claims. The MMPI-2 was restructured to make its clinical scales more distinctive and meaningful. The finished product was published in 2008 and called the MMPI-2 Restructured Form or MMPI-2RF. It contains a total of 338 items and 50 scales, some of which are summarized in the following tables. There are nine clinical scales introduced by Telegan and his colleagues. The masculinity femininity scale from the original MMPI and MMPI2 is eliminated. There are eight validity scales which is added by infrequent somatic response. There are 20 scales that measures problems or the specific problem scales group. There are also two scales that measures interest. 
or the Enteras Scales Group. And the revised versions of MMPI-2 measures or the Psi-5 Scales Group. In 1980s, while the MMPI was being revised to become the MMPI-2, test developers created a new test for adolescents. It is called the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory Adolescent or MMPIA. It is a 478-item true-false test designed for use in clinical counseling in school settings for the purpose of assessing psychopathology and identifying personal, social, and behavioral problems. It is designed for administration in the 14 to 18-year-old age range who have at least a 6th grade reading ability. It is also available for administration by computer, paper and pencil, and by audio cassette. The time required for administration of all the items is between 45 and 60 minutes. MMPI is a work of progress that has been developed, restructured, patched, re-innovated, and will continue to improve. Before any tool of personality assessment, the assessor will ideally consider some important issues with regard to assessment of a particular ACC. Many of these issues relate to the level of acculturation, values, identity, worldview, and language of the ACC. Acculturation is an ongoing process by which an individual's thoughts, behaviors, values, worldview, and identity develop in relation to the general thinking, behavior, customs, and values of a particular cultural group. Acculturation begins at birth. At the time you were born, you will be influenced by your family or caretakers that serve as agents of the culture. In the years to come, as you grow up, you will also be influenced by other people, like the teachers, peers, the books you read, the films you watch, and everything that surrounds you, that serves as agents of acculturation. Through this process, one develops culturally accepted ways of thinking, feeling, and behaving. Closely related to acculturation is values, Values is what which the individual prizes or the ideals that an individual believes in. Rokic differentiated what he called instrumental from terminal values. Instrumental values are guiding principles to help one attain some objective. Examples are honesty, imagination, ambition, cheerfulness. While terminal values are guiding principles in a mode of behavior that is an endpoint objective. Comfortable life, exciting life, sense of accomplishment, self-respect are some of its examples. Understanding an individual's values is an integral part of understanding personality. Because people from different cultural groups can grow up with very different values, ranging from their views, perspective, or whether they are from a collectivist culture or an individualist culture. Identity in this context is defined as a set of cognitive and behavioral characteristics by which individuals define themselves as members of a particular group or their sense of self or identity. Levine in Padilla defined identification as a process by which an individual assumes a pattern of behavior characteristic of other people. When assessing identification, you may be asked of what you call yourself when asked about your ethnicity. Another key culture-related personality variable concerns how an ACC tends to view the world or cold worldview. It is the unique way people interpret and make sense of their perceptions as a consequence of their learning experiences, cultural background, and related variables. That's all for this report. And thank you so much for listening.